has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you, and also with you. Welcome to our Ascension Day service this morning. The first part of the Eucharist is streamed here from St Peter and St Paul, and the second half, which you can find on YouTube and uh, Facebook, is being streamed from the set. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, for 40 days we have been celebrating with joyful hearts the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. His bursting from the tomb and his defeat of the power of sin and death. He appeared to his disciples many times and told them about the kingdom of God. Today we recall how he left this earth and returned to his Father, ascended into heaven to take his throne over all dominions and powers, trusted in his reign over all creation, and submitted to his kingly yet loving rule. Let us hear the story of his party. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptised with water, but you will be baptised with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. See, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens. Jesus, the Son of God, let us offer him the praise worthy of his name. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray that our risen and ascended Lord will lead us to eternal life. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that as we believe your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to have ascended into the heavens, so we in heart and mind may also ascend and with him continually dwell, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The New Testament reading is from the letter of the Ephes to the Ephesians, chapter 1, verses 15 to the end. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eye of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, 
but all the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints. And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us, who believe according to the working of his great power? God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. Far above all rule and authority, and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet, and he has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Said Pat Corfit Swan. All nations shall come and worship you, O Christ, and share in the feast of your kingdom. Great and wonderful are your deeds. Lord God the Almighty, just and true are your ways, O ruler of the nations. Who shall not revere and praise your name, O Lord? For you alone are holy. All nations shall come and worship in your presence, for your just dealings have been revealed. To the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honour and glory and might, for ever and ever. Amen. All nations shall come and worship you, O Christ, and share in the feast of your kingdom. says the Lord. Remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, These are the words I spoke to you while I was still with you. That everything written about me in the law of Moses the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifted up his hands, he blessed them. And while he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him, and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple, blessing God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. May I speak and may you hear in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, does God actually exist? How do you know? How often have other people told you that God cannot possibly exist? How often have people tried to blind you with what they think is scientific fact to explain the world of creation? Or perhaps what reasons have you yourself come up with during your life to deny God's existence? Are your reasons perhaps, well, God would never allow people to suffer? Or God cannot listen to everyone at the same time? God cannot possibly know every one of us. How could Jesus walk through walls? Jesus couldn't just have descend, ascended into heaven. Sounds more like a scientific fiction TV series, being the Father. When I was 
understanding from my theology diploma before I was ordained. One thing that really came home to me was the fact that we cannot judge God by our own ideas and standards. It's very easy to think that God acts like one of us. If we can't do it, then God can't. We try to reason God away by our own standards and ideas. Jesus was fully human and fully divine. Something else our human brain struggled to understand. God is outside time and space. Now that might be simply a bit of a cop-out, a simple way of answering questions, or sound as if God is a made-up concept. But those of us who have a living faith know that Jesus does speak to us now. Jesus does give us a feeling of knowing he is there. Once we recognise that Jesus is there for each one of us, we know the joys of God's presence. We all share the doubts expressed above quite frequently. When you become ordained, it doesn't magic way doubts. You just have someone to share them with. We also know times when God can be working in our lives. Just as we cannot explain away disasters or why God does not seem to be there, he is of course, we also cannot explain away rationally the amazing miracles we see in people's lives especially when they discover Jesus for themselves, when people are healed, when people turn away from addictions and crime. For myself, I only have to look at the amazing way the body is made and the beauty of the world to know that God's hand is there in their creation. Over the last few weeks since Easter, in the readings, we have heard how the disciples were confronted with the risen Jesus, who could appear and disappear. A Jesus who could walk through locked doors. One minute he was in Emmaus, next minute he's in Jerusalem. The Jesus who was back with his disciples, yet he wasn't. They were meeting the resurrected Jesus, the Messiah, who was the same, yet different. They were learning to accept that in their new relationship, he was coming and going in a way that was impossible to be explained away by their human understanding. In our reading for the first book of Acts, with which we started the service, Acts also is written by Luke, so the Gospel and Acts were written, we believe, by the same person. We heard that the disciples were trying to pin Jesus down. When they came together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the time or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. I have a lot of sympathy with the disciples. As Mother Mary will tell you, I am someone who likes to plan months ahead. I want to know what is happening weeks in advance. Although I have to say, I'm very good at telling other people to take one day at a time. Theologians often talk about Jesus' kingdom being now and not yet. The disciples were just getting used to the resurrected Jesus when he ascended into heaven after telling them to wait in Jerusalem for the Holy Spirit. They had thought that God's kingdom was coming there. And the early church were expected to Jesus to come back any moment, very soon after his ascension into heaven. And if you read the Acts of Apostles and Peter's speeches and certainly some of Paul's writings, they were expecting Jesus to come in again. A poet called Charles Williams wrote about this. He was one of the Inklings group. He lived 1886 to 1945 and was part of the group that included C.S. Lewis and J.R.R. Tolkien. For Charles Williams, the ascension was there and part of the first coming of Jesus. We now live in the now, and he felt the church was forced to become universal and durable like time itself, that the church was almost forced to go on. It is the second coming that will mark the end of time, and presumably the last transformation of the church universal. In his book, The Descent of the Dove, Charles Williams wrote, The church expected the second coming of Christ immediately, and no doubt this was so in an ordinary, literal sense. But it was certainly expected also in another sense. The convert 
until the cities of Asia, and soon of Europe, where the small groups were founded, had known. In their conversion, one way or another, a first coming of their Redeemer. And then, and then, that was the consequent task and trouble. The then, he had come, and they adored and believed. They communicated, practiced, and waited for his further exhibition of himself. The then lasted, and. There seemed to be no farther equivalent now. Time became an individual and Catholic problem. The church had to become as Catholic, as universal, and as durable as time. Catholic, of course, meaning worldwide. When Jesus ascended to heaven on a human level, there must have been a sense of mission accomplished. Yet the era of the church's mission was only about to begin. As Jesus left his human friends behind, his final act on earth was to bless his disciples. Yet the ascension is not a negative experience. The termination of Christ's earthly physical presence. We should see the ascension as the start of God's worldwide mission and the witness of the church by the power of the Spirit. A moment ago we heard the disciples asking Jesus when they tried to pin him down. Lord, is this the time you will restore the kingdom to Israel? It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, to the ends of the earth. This is the time when the kingdom will be restored. But more than that, the disciples will be the first generation who will receive the power of the Spirit to be Christ's witnesses, not merely to restore Israel, but to witness to the ends of the earth. It may sound puzzling that at the point of Jesus is to bring in his worldwide kingship, he hands the task over. Why does he entrust his kingdom to us, feeble women and men? Christ's resurrection is the start of a new era, God's work of recreation. In the death, in the death and resurrection of Jesus, the first creation is restated. Its destructive features are reversed in Jesus Christ, the second Adam. Speaking of human beings, the psalmist says, Yet you, meaning God, have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honour. Jesus, who receives all authority in heaven and earth, commits to humans the awesome task of realising the kingdom, because that was his divine intention through the power of the Holy Spirit. The authority Jesus gives to his disciples to proclaim that the agents of the kingdom is an authority restored. Through Jesus and by the outpouring of the Spirit, it restores to us a divine vocation. Take authority. The Spirit of Jesus is with us. Wherever we go, Jesus will have been with us, preparing a way. We go in his way, and bend to his authority. We can't judge God by our standards. God does not conform to our understanding. We can't pin God down into our terms. The disciples wanted to pin Jesus down in terms of his kingdom, but Jesus showed them it was a time of the kingdom now, but not in the way they thought. Jesus ascended to his Father, so through the power of the Holy Spirit, God's kingdom could be realised, and God's kingdom is now and not yet, because we are here to do Christ's work on earth until he returns. So today, as we celebrate the ascension of Jesus to his Father, let us remember it is not a simple idea for Jesus leaving until he returns. Let us not box God in of our own ideas of what God is, or where Jesus is. We must all of us, as Christ's stewards of earth, take up our responsibility of realising God's kingdom now, here, today. Our mission is to pray to look at the opportunity God gives us every day, to seize those opportunities, to spread the good news of the gospel and to minister to others as they were Jesus himself, not for forgetting ourselves and through the power of the Holy Spirit, bring God's kingdom here and now. As we give thanks to the day of Christ's ascension to his Father, let's take some time to define what mission Jesus has left you and me to do. We must be bold in our prayer, in our vision, 
not trying to box God in by our own human ideas and limitations, but take up Jesus' command as he has said to his Father. In this current difficult time, more than ever, we must be present alongside others where they are now to bring Christ's hope, his risen, ascended presence. It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Amen. to say creed together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from light, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him, him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. He was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified unto Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophet. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us join our prayers with those of our Saviour Christ, seeking the Father's blessing and the gifts of the Spirit. Jesus Christ, great High Priest, living forever to intercede for us, pray for the Church, your broken body in the world. Father, we pray that you would use us to help bring in your kingdom now. Speak to us that we know how to be your witnesses. We pray for our church, for Chinkley, for Father Justin as he starts with us, and all our ministry team, that we may together learn to listen to you and help us bring around the kingdom of God now and not yet. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus Christ, King of Righteousness, at throne at the right hand of the Majesty on high, pray for the world and make it subject to your gentle rule. We pray for all responsibilities of leadership, for all who are making decisions about our lives at this moment, and for those who have it in their power to bring peace in the world. We pray that you will speak to them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus Christ, Son of Man, join humanity in the life of God. Pray for your brothers and sisters in need, distress, or sorrow. We commit to you, Father, all those on our prayer list who are prayed for this morning. And we pray for you. And for any of whom we wish to particularly commit to God's mercy at this time. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus Christ, pioneer of our salvation, begin us to glory through your death and resurrection. Surround with your saints and angels those who have died trusting in your promises. 
to rectify them in the land who have died recently. And any who shares wine as it was time. May they rest in peace and the fires of hell. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus Christ, Lord of all things, ascended far above the heavens and filled the universe. Pray for us to receive the gifts you give us for working or serving. Jesus Christ, keep the church in the unity of the Spirit and in the bond of peace, and bring the whole created order to worship at your feet. For you are alive and reign with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. I will say to him, Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. And as we close this first part of the service, we'll be able to go on and post the from YouTube for the second part of the Eucharist. But let us share together the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all, evermore. Amen. Have a holy and blessed day.